Now, it's amazing our guys don't get paid for doing all this research. And we do research on your behalf to try and pick you the winner of, of the Cheltenham Paddy Power Gold Cup. And uh, we'll start on present view because we obviously watched that over today. As Jamie said, clouded the last hurdle behind Virginity. Anyone want to mention that particular one, Sam? Uh, yeah, we, we obviously have had the trainer on. He's the better man to speak to than any of us uh, on the panel. But the, the horse looks fantastic. It is the apple of Jamie's eye. I was fortunate enough to visit the yard and the way he eulogises about this horse, he has high expectations for it. And I think it's a fair favourite. I think the price is about right. I know people probably aren't going to be clambering to get on at six to one. But ask yourself, if this horse had previously won at the festival, we know how important that is. If you look at the stats, Southern Base Trainer, everything like that, an improver, the age, it ticks a lot of the boxes you need to win a race like the Paddy Power, um, which is always something I look at, e even as just your average Joe punter. I don't do it on a full-time basis, but it's something that catches my eye. Okay, um, from, a, from an average Joe punter to a big punter. I think, uh, really? uh, maybe. Um, I, I think what took my eye at the festival was this horse went into Cheltenham with, in really good form, but with a load of runs on flat tracks, right and left handed flat tracks. And I thought, ooh, will he really take to Cheltenham, you know? And, and he did, and he took to it very well. So I was quite impressed with that, because it's quite a baptism of fire to, to go into the, the, the rewards for racing handicap chase. And um, although obviously the, the finish of that is a talking point, <laughs> whether he would have won or been second, but he, he looked like a horse who would win more races. He's not been that harshly treated by the handicapper, I didn't think. He's, he's got to have a massive chance. Well, as I said, if it would have won at Cheltenham or taken a chase route first time out, it would have been put up. Never finished uh, yeah. lower than fourth in any race. No, it's and that was once. Oh. So it's all. So you know, if you if you if you want a solid each way, but okay, it's a bit skinny for some people. But you know, you, you're probably going to expect present view to be there or thereabouts. Okay, Matt. Yeah, I, I completely get present view. Um, am I excited at the price? No, I think he's priced accordingly. But um, as Sam said, there he's got all the credentials of what I look for um, in a horse to win this race. He's you know he's he's not exposed by any means. Slightly concerned that he did hit the last over hurdles at Cheltenham. Um, you know, I do like to see horses over fences not making those sort of mistakes at the lower obstacles, but he's definitely well handicapped off a mark of 144, carries 10 stone 12. I've got my own ratings, 158. I mean, in March, that race we have at Cheltenham, of course, he beat at a glance half, of le um, half a length that day. Yeah, at a glance would have won that. I like, a, um, I like at a glance as well, and at the prices, yeah. if I had a tenner in my hand now, mm, you know, it's, it's double the price. I think at a glance, yes. you know, ran in this race last year, behind uh, John Spirit and if you just have a look at the weights um, it does give present view actually the beating um, of but, uh, of John Spirit but um, in all honesty you know there's a lot there's an awful lot to like about the um, about the horse and I mean I, I take your point about flipping that um, cl clipping that um, last hurdle at Cheltenham but sometimes they pay the fences a bit more respect we have mm. to move on it's not all about present view let's move on about one horse that we were talking about pre-season uh, certainly big, before the big races came up was Bywise. Mm. Yeah, Bywise. He is an interesting horse. I put him up as an eye catcher um, some time ago. I'd have preferred him to go to the Hennessy where it's further and they would probably want it to go so quick because his jumping is suspect. He has got Cheltenham form, um, but he's got to improve on the book. I mean, he is held uh, by a couple of runners in here and I think he would have to improve a stone. His run side, obviously, it wouldn't have gone unnoticed by his trainer, those mistakes that he made last year but in a race he's too risky for me and now um, I think he's got a bit to prove and at the prices at the moment what price is he saying? Eight to one with Paddy Power. That's moment, desperately yeah. that's desperately short. I mean, did, I mean if it hadn't made a mistake I mean he ran on. I mean it ran on so well, I mean it caught yeah. everyone's eye after that race I think it's fair to say you know. And that's but I just wonder I don't know about price. you Billy but I wonder with the hustle and bustle of a fast paced race whether the jumping will come under scrutiny. Yeah it wouldn't be for me at the price I mean he was stellar improvement last year fantastic uh, level of improvement. He did be Astra Cab by about nine legs at Cheltenham. He is, he's a real old sort of favourite, but um, I, I, I would think the risk um, is too high. Do we think Paul Monet is going to sit and wait, a nice patient undoubtedly, ride? Undoubtedly. You know, he might not know. have too much if, if he jumps like he did around <laughs> Cheltenham last time. That's where he would be. But if, you know, if he... I know it's a big ifs and buts, but we talk about horses for this race and, not, you know, for a Paddy Power Gold Cup, I like to see a horse um, unexposed, only, you know, and what, the, for that being exposed, they're going to be well handicapped. So he does fall under the second season sort of novice coming here. But he's got the same route 
as Jamie Snowden, Evan Williams, in, in going over hurdles. This time, Biowise won that race over hurdles mm. and won it quite handsomely. And again, from, from he, a good I, I remember he made a mistake there at Ludlow over hurdles. Mm. And I just, I just, I think Biowise is a horse for people to definitely stay on the right si uh, side of later in the season because he'd be better than his mark. Okay. Well, as I said, these guys um, later on are going to give charity bets, two hundred pound kindly donated each uh, from Paddy Power that will go to the injured jockeys fund. If I was picking a horse in this particular race, it would be the next one that we're going to talk about. But uh, uh, that's hope someone else might come in and put the donation through. <laughs> this one is John Spirit. I really do think this has got a cracking chance. I know it won under 10 stone two last year, got a major weight burden this year, but I, I think it was hands and heels last time. And I think by looking at other options, we could be complicating matters, but your view on John Spirit. John Spirit, he's got 11 stone 10. Um, He's got it all to do for me, really. I must admit, this race is beginning to look at, when you look at some collateral form lines, you think to yourself, well, he holds that horse and he holds that horse. So whether this is a year when it's not the strongest and we haven't got many of those novices coming through, I wasn't might as excited as normal for this race. I actually think you're probably a little bit spot on there. I think there's some outstanding... I guess it's a real transitional year, though. I mean, I was surprised by the lack of horses coming from Ireland for this. I thought we'd see a few more. I don't think David Pipe's got the strongest hand, yet usually we associate him, do we not, for having a, a reasonable go at this race? He's, he's got a chance, hasn't he? I yeah. mean, just like John Spear, I mean, hats off to John Joe Neal if he gets this one to win <laughs> another race. I mean, he's, he's you know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against him, really. I'll tell you what I think with John Spear. He's, if, he, if he does win this, he's got to go for the Gold Cup. Stamina doubts or not, he'd have to go How for the Gold Cup. How many horses is John Joe going to have going for the Gold well, Cup at this rate? Because this, this is the thing. <laughs> but what I would say is an interesting quote that, that's come out this evening. He suggested, John Joe O'Neill, the importance of these big Saturday races towards his attempt to win the championship. And this is probably the first time he's really But he's improved taken horses. Serious. I mean, oh. year after year, I mean, this horse is only seven, I do believe. And, you know, Holywell's been improved. Tarquinder Stills improved. There's a number of horses that keep on improving. Two seasons ago, and he didn't jump, did he? And then he came no. out last year and he jumped. And um, he jumped all through the year. It's almost <laughs> but, I mean, we'll, we'll, let me put this question to you about John Spirit. Did you fancy it last time? When it no, won. I couldn't have I couldn't have had it on my mind last time, and he surprised me, and that's why because I just know in my hearts of heart on that day I actually backed the second horse, Persian Snow, knowing he was well handicapped horse. Now there was six lengths back to the third horse that day, so you look at it and you think, blimey, what's but it? But Richie was just. I mean, That's he's run to 100. Thing, he's yeah. run to 161 for me last time. He's running off 156. He's got to. He's got to improve again. The reason he might be one of those that are keep on falling us is the way he's ridden. I'm not sure whether he's. It's a case if he doesn't like to be surrounded by horses because he's taken out wide, always delivered late, and I don't think he does a lot in front. Kid and that along. Might, I think that might be the reason why you quite can't get to the bottom of him and why he might just be um, surprised. It's Richie, interesting. That Richie McLaren always rides it, and, mm. and uh, AP McCoy. Yeah, just just to add on a side note, you may and possibly Gold Cup. Uh, actually, trainers come out this evening and said that Ryanair would be the route if he runs a really good race. Wow. If not, we know he's a middle of the road handicapper. So, <laughs> shows you probably the extremes of finishing in the top four of the Paddy Power or finishing sort of fifth and below. It, it draws that line between really good horses. Absolutely. Um, Oscar Whiskey, um, we don't think it's going to run. No, there wasn't positive reports about him running. Um, if he does run, obviously there's there's a there's a class angle there, but he really has not shown any of his form. But he's uh, dropped. That he has severe uh, uh, underachieving nine-year-olds. Yeah. Nine, not really, many nine-year-olds. I'm a bit biased, but I, I think mm. the horse has had a very unfair, unpopular profile, and I'm one of the people that have never really taken um, to the horse. And as we say, at nine. <sighs> Mm. Most, most wins, it's fair to say, also for that horse, have been in small fields, ranging yeah. from four runners mm. to about six runners. It's been forever a problem with distances as well. OK, so we're scrapping right Oscar Wissi. Uxazandri, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, Alan King, uh, second at 33 to one. Any interest here? I, I backed him, and um, he showed his true worth, didn't he, in the JLT novices, and I backed him. He had a lovely run round from the front under Chock Thornton and um, didn't quite hang on. He, he could have more to come. I just think he does sit, what, £10 higher now, and he just sits a little bit high in the weights for me. Yeah, he looks. He doesn't look consistent to me. He doesn't run two races alike. He always runs very well a win to goes close, or he runs right the way down the field, as he did last season at Warwick, and he repeated that last time um, at Aintree. So and not only that, on his best form, I agree with you, Billy, that I just think... He's, um, I think the handicapper knows plenty about him. Six-year-old, and Alan King's horses have been in good form this season. I mean, I was at Huntingdon on Sunday, and he had a couple of winners, and they ran really well. You know, they were short prices, but they, they, they won and did the job accordingly. So I think it's fair to say he's got his string tuned up, which is always a, a positive in this kind of thing. You know, some years he's come to the festival, or he's come to big events, and he's had bugs in the yard or no real explanation. So I think we'll know the horse will, will go well if it can.
Mm. I don't think it's a lack from a fitness angle. It doesn't angle. see if uh, cheap pieces are applied. I think it needs some kind of headgear. Mm. Um, right, now I'm going to talk about Calistrodron. Mm -hmm. A horse that's never won <laughs> oh, dear. over the big fences. Billy, I'll tell I'm going to go to you first. I know, the, I know why. <laughs> Well, I, th I think Colour Squadron is one of the best handicap chasers we've seen to never have won a race. He must be. I mean, you know, he's won some fantastic races. In a finish, you can say, well, is, is he putting it all in? Is he just an unlucky horse? I actually think he's just an unlucky horse. And, you know, he's, he's almost testament. But the point is, Billy, he carried 10 stone a... a uh, admittedly, Wonderful Charm always goes fresh and whatever, but that was disappointing. To, to, to go clear two for a moment, Newton Abbott, and just fold like it that. It was disappointing how, how he folded up it was. Um, and he, he's kind of testament to the handicapping system that we've created in that he's now off a really high mark without winning. But, you know, he will come here, he'll win a big race. You can't see him not winning a big race. Yeah, I don't think we... That last race at uh, Newton Abbott that was actually won by Wonderful Charm, he didn't want to be in front. It was a case if he was going to well and he got there. A small race. field like that, never but it's like, it's like little, it's like, like having mm -hmm. two fences to go, little Sam's running against me. <laughs> <laughs> You'd expect Sam to hold on, what, wouldn't you? What I would say is, Billy, you've got to go back to 2004, uh, 2011 to be getting a win. I mean, yeah. you read the form, second, second, third, th second, fifth, second, fourth. We talk, about the, we talk about the rise for John Spirit, but Colour Squadron, who finished second in this race last year, was carrying 10 stone two. He, he himself is up to 11 stone he, six. He beat John Spirit last year, didn't he? Kept getting £2 from him. He's getting £4 today. He's got every chance of the weights. Yeah, I think, he, I, think that, that I think that run, though, I think proved more that John Spirit didn't run his race because of how far he beat him. And you thought, well, perhaps John Spirit, had, you know, that he was handicapped to the hill, but he's proven that to be wrong. So I just don't think John Spirit ran his race that day. I think it's also months of the time. But we're interested in this. Colour Squadron, about, mm. yeah, not, not for me, at the age and at the fact that I think that the, the chance to win this sort of race has passed by now and it'll be running on the spot come the final hundred <laughs> yards and, <laughs> and running out the frame I expect for Billy. Well, that's the beauty about <laughs> that's the beauty about horse racing isn't it the fact is that everyone uh, has got got an opinion um, on it and no doubt everyone's sitting at home thinking well you know Billy's right Cal squadron will win. <laughs> anyway. um, Indian Castle was another interesting one. Um, ran about price around about fourteen to one. A move from Donald McCain to Ian Williams. We don't know why, but you you like this one? Yeah, I do. This is my selection, Indian Castle. I don't know the reason why uh, move from Donald McCain, but certainly had some good form at Cheltenham again, winning, beating Anacotti uh, by a length and a quarter. That length and a quarter can be marked up because as he jumped the last, being two lengths clear, idled all the way up to the line until Anacotti got to its girth, and just as he was hitting the line, it was getting going again. Had the run. Uh, horse running to a mark of 154 that day, running off 140. He's definitely well handicapped. He's got a, a stone in hand. Yeah, that was was over two mile five, but he has got winning form over two and a half miles. I thought it was um, really interesting. The top weight in this race is uh, Rajhani um, Express of Nicky Henderson's. Uh, there's a form line. He beat Oara Gold at Cheltenham, giving it a pound for a nine length beating. And also Indian Castle after that gave you a go a beating of nine lengths, giving it three pounds. So Surely what, though, Matt, it's a trick. So basically, no, that's this, suggesting this that Indian Castle's the same horse well, as the top weight. It's a stayer, it's a stayer <laughs> Matt. Let's not forget this horse was one that I followed the crowd with at Cheltenham, uh, way back in the amateur riders. All the signs were there. Derek O'Connor was booked for it. It was, was a favorite. talking horse. <laughs> Donald McCain, I think, put it up at a lot of the preview evenings. Now, there's obviously some form of ability there that, that, that means it has got a big race but in Pete's it. Pete's point, he is bred to stay forever. Yeah. And He's you look at that Cheltenham race, uh, which was over two miles six, I do believe. Five. Five. Staying on at the end. See, I don't think I think he was three, idling. Three mile match out in the race. Well, it was a two five and yeah. a three mile one. I thought yeah. it was yeah. a. I thought it was a bad. Uh, it was a mistake stepping up to three mile one furlongs. He'd been used to running shorter distance. They never were going quick enough for him. In fact, the the, jo the amateur jockey was taking a pull most of the way round. They weren't going quick enough. And for me, the horse blatantly didn't stay. He made a bad mistake um, four out and done well to be hanging on. He just didn't stay that trip for me. And I think it's interesting coming back from the trip on a on a course that he goes well. Like he's definitely. Um, well handicapped and off 10 stone 8 I expect him to go mm. very close I, c I can see the argument for it and uh, also the ground is going to get softer it's not going to get better with the rain we've got forecast which I think will be in the horse's favour well to be fair we did get an update from Cheltenham earlier on today and just to give you a, a, a line on that 20 millimetres of rain are expected between now 
and the end of the week, and they expect it to go off good to good to soft at the worst, soft, soft in places, places. But that's obviously you know this far out, it's very dangerous to kind of start guessing. But Indian Castle, um, he wouldn't mind it. Um, okay, anyway. there's some some other outsiders in this race. We've got a few minutes to talk about those. And whilst we're focusing on Ch Cheltenham form itself, we can't let it go by without talking about uh, Persian snow and the particularly at a glance, at a glance. At a glance, I think the, the rain would be completely against. Um, at a glance, I, I've just got a problem with horses that have come to this race before and been beat. And he's here again. He's obviously got that form line with present view. But I do think that out of the two, present view will probably find more improvement. And the ground, any description of soft would be against at a glance. I backed at a glance that day. So uh, I'm going to obviously go the other way around, I think, at this, this stage. But it's a really good horse. And I like the trainer. You know, he's not, he's not coming all the way down from the mileage. Day. 34 oh. races, 18 other hurdles, high mileage. You've got to mention Easter Meteor moved from yeah. Emma Lavelle to um, um, David Pipe. And uh, he's got form at Cheltenham. He was really unlucky last year. He came, he got hampered, didn't he? And then he was, um, took a tumble. But he, he showed that he's got the form to defy more or less the mark he's on. He's probably high enough in the ways, but yeah. he's got form here. If, if David Pipe, if moved to David Pipe has transformed him, he could run a big race. Let's not forget that Martin Pipe, I think, won this f certainly five times in six years. That's your market mover, isn't it? That's going to be your morning gamble. You